Welcome back to our series B2B appointment setting from start to finish. But this time, we're gonna share more real life cases and more in-depth facts that we at Belkins practice to master the art of appointment setting. If you didn't see our last video on how appointment setting actually works, be sure to check it out first to have a complex understanding of how appointment setting approaches actually work, link below. But for our video today, you're gonna to get five tips, one real life case, hear about two life-changing tools and much more. So stay with me to the end, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get into it. To break things down in more detail, over the course of our next few videos, we're gonna talk about the tools we use, what things make us stand out, and our five outreach experts that bring our customers success while running appointment setting campaigns. First outreach expert up, lead generation and research specialist. So using a service like ZoomInfo or Apollo is one option, but that's not how we roll. In my last video, I explained the importance of data hygiene and how it affects overall performance. So instead, we have a very large devoted team of expert lead researchers who manually attain lead information and provide us with up-to-date, personalized, and high-quality leads. How do we assure this? By manually scraping the web for prospects, then validating them multiple times with the help of different validation tools like Zero Bounce, for example and by utilizing our experts' years of experience to provide the best leads that will and do convert into customers. Now, you've probably done something similar to this in the past, but I'm just getting started. Our researchers evaluate every ideal client profile received to make sure we don't start scraping too few or too many industries at once. There has to be specific intention on which industries you're targeting. Going too specific means your list will be too small. Going too broad will take time and will be harder to track the industries that are truly providing value. Because there is much more to outreach than just sending every title, every industry, every company size, the exact same wording. Different industries prefer different email approaches, but we'll get to that in one of our future videos. Having a clear understanding of which titles are your buying personas in each specific industry is vital. If you target whoever in every industry, Odds are you run into spam issues because your offering doesn't line up with their specific line of work. The same is true of different sized companies. The CEO of a company with 50 employees is more likely to be your buying persona. However, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company won't even see your email. Trust me, our team knows which buying personas to target for each industry, each region, each size. Yet another thing I need to add is that our lead researchers synchronize with the rest of our team for us to be able to write the best templates ever. How? By adding specific data points that stand out. For example, if a client is outsourcing designers, we scrape sources to find companies hiring designers. If a company specializes on a specific e-commerce platform, we find and target companies on said platform. If a client helps with website traffic, we find companies with low traffic. These are simply a few of the many different data points we gather, which can later be pulled into our templates to add more personalization to our emails being sent. This is our approach, but if you decide to hire a lead generation specialist like we do, you can build out your process combining automation and human touch to ensure your campaigns are getting the notice they deserve. Before we get to our next section and discuss bottlenecks in depth, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and let us know in a comment whether you use services like ZoomInfo or Apollo, or if you have an internal lead research specialist. Now let's talk about some bottlenecks when it comes to research. Ever sent out a bunch of emails only to find that a majority of them ended up bouncing? This is one of the very first things we verify through the help of different tools like Zero Bounce and others. This might seem like a tedious step, but after six years of working in the industry, we know for a fact that without this step, you cut your outreach results in half. Now, when you verify your emails, make sure that you never use the so-called catch-all emails when you're just starting out. Catch all are emails that get delivered from all senders and you never actually know if an actual email recipient exists or not. It's important to exclude such emails when you send out your first batch as it will affect your sending reputation. My advice is after you export leads from any lead platform, run an additional email check. As a matter of fact, if you wanna get a very high sending reputation, then ask your lead research specialist to verify LinkedIn's and titles of the people you'll email. This way you can ensure that all the people you're emailing are still with the company. You'd be surprised, but the stats say that a lead list has a 20% data decay. So when lead platforms sell leads, you never know when the last verification was done. Another bottleneck can be a lack of understanding your TAM. 
If you don't know what TAM is, we have a detailed video on this topic, so feel free to follow the link below to learn even more. So my first tip is if you don't know your TAM, sit down and dive into research, evaluation, and careful study of which industries, locations, and titles fit you best. Like I've said time and time again, it's better to start with a very specific TAM, and if you're not getting the desired results, only then should you start to expand your reach. But also an important note, you can't run an effective outreach campaign while targeting only 100 leads per ICP. Outreach is a numbers game. So in a best case scenario, you'll have 10 to 15 people replying to your emails and maybe two or three of them will actually engage. Based on our experience, anything between 500 to 1,000 leads a month will give enough bandwidth to your sales team and a good number of industries or titles to test with. So some more tips for lead research. Do your research in small batches. Instead of finding 2,000 in a week, try finding around 50 per day. This assures that over the course of a few months, you know your data is fresh and up to date. Tip number three, always clean your data before finishing the list. When inputting lead information, keep things nice and tidy to avoid issues down the road. For example, removing LLC, Inc., or LTD will help things be more orderly and will look cleaner if pulling company name into your templates. Also, if you have a company name that consists of three or more long words, use abbreviations if appropriate. Imagine you're targeting companies like Apple, Microsoft, or Disney. The number of employees is simply breathtaking. Odds are that you don't get a response from the first few contacts you reach out to. So tip number four, start with two to three prospects from said company. If they run through the sequence and you get absolutely zero response, after a few weeks, add an additional two to three prospects and continue this rhythm until you get a response. I had a client that wanted to target large enterprise companies and we used this method and we even got a meeting with Disney. Thanks to us having gone through around 20 prospects from that company over the course of a few months. So from firsthand experience, I can honestly say it does work. On the other hand, if you want to rush things and add 20 Disney contacts during month one, go ahead, but you'll probably get flagged since their IT has a system in place detecting and blocking spammers. So to not be a spammer, send two to three personalized emails at a time. If you've watched this far and you're enjoying the video, hit the like and subscribe button and let me know in a comment which of the tips I gave you work best for your business. My last tip regarding lead research, be flexible with your ICP and listen to experts with experience in this line of work. I can't count the number of times I checked an ICP with my team in the past and my researchers came up with additional industries, titles, etc. that just made so much sense and ended up actually bringing in even more appointments than the original ICP. So in regards to research, let's summarize. Understand and test your TAM. Always check your leads for bounces. Research leads in small batches to ensure validity. Keep your lead database clean and tidy, and don't add more than two to three leads per company into an active sequence simultaneously to avoid spam. Speaking of spam, as mentioned in my previous videos, if you're like Balkans and you run cold email campaigns, then knowing how to get your emails delivered is one of the most important parts of the process. Yes, tools like Folderly do exist to take care of this, but with any product, there are nuances. And in our company, we hire and train so-called email deliverability experts to help with the most unique cases. Stay tuned for our next video where we break down email deliverability in detail. If you're interested in learning more about email deliverability in the meantime, check out our how-to video on this topic, link below. But an even more detailed video on this topic is coming very, very soon. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you want to grow your pipeline or need assistance with outreach, schedule a free consultation with us by following the link in the description box below. Till next time.